Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and this is your first photo news fix for 2020. This fix is brought to you by none other than Squarespace. My personal website, jaredpollen.com, is still built using Squarespace and I wouldn't use anything else if you're a creative or a photographer. It's simple, easy, affordable, you still don't need to know coding, and I guarantee you can have a website up in under 30 minutes. That's pretty damn good. To get a 14-day free trial without a credit card, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. First up, GoPros finally announced their one-inch sensor Hero Action Camera System with a revolutionary modular design. It's not a GoPro. Oh, it's not a GoPro. Uh, Oh, it's from Insta360. Anyway, introducing the Insta360 One R. And I quote, this concept is simple. One battery, one processor, and a selection of quick swapping lens mods. In an instant, One R transforms from a dual lens 360 shooter to a standard action camera. One R currently offers three ways to shoot with three available lens mods. The dual lens 360 mod, the 4K wide angle mod, and the one inch wide angle angle mod co-engineered with Leica. Now, does that mean, Steven, that it's part of the Mount Alliance? Keep going harder. Isn't this what we've been saying GoPro should have come out with many years ago? A camera with a one inch sensor? This is the reason why GoPro stock went from just around $90 a share roughly three or four years ago to just above $4 a share today. Good on Insta360 for coming up with a modular design that offers things that many people want in an action camera. Now, I still don't think 360 will ever take off, but it is nice to have the option along with a one inch sensor version backed by Leica. Oh, wait, what's that? Barbara Walters is on the line. She's, she's saying, oh, really? that only doctors and lawyers are allowed to purchase the Leica mod? Oh, I guess I better call Saul. Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. The pricing of the system doesn't seem that bad at all. For the basic 4K version, you're looking at $299. For the Insta One Twin Edition, it's $479, and the One R one inch version from Leica, is $549. You'll also be able to buy other modules to mix and match in your system. For example, if you have the basic system for $299, you can add the Leica one inch camera. Now my one concern with Insta360 is their software. Now in my personal past experience using their 360 cameras, the software's always been an issue. Now if they can get the software to a place where it's fast, responsive, and doesn't crash all the time, they just might be on to something. Now GoPro on the other hand, seems to be close to done. This is done, man. <laughs> Next up, there's a bunch of Nikon news. Nikon's officially announced the 7200 2.8 VRS lens for their Z mount system. Zoltan! I've been waiting so long for this lens that I no longer shoot photos with Nikons. But with that being said, I am still gonna go ahead and order one of these so we can use it in the studio for video or when I need to do some reviews on the Z system. The 7200 2.8 is the first Nikon lens to feature the newly developed SR element. What's SR stand for? Glad you asked, Steven. Sony rumors? Really? No, it stands for short wavelength refractive, though I'm not sure how that's not SWR. God. Now, another thing I'm not sure I understand is what this new element does. So I decided to just read the press release. A specialized dispersion glass lens featuring characteristics that greatly reflect light with wavelengths shorter than that of blue. By controlling short wavelength light, that is difficult to compensate. The lens can more effectively collect light of very specific wavelengths and achieve highly precise chromatic aberration compensation. Nerds! Is anyone still out there? Because that was f boring. No! This is a sharp, no pun intended looking lens. It has a very nice ribbing, which should make your fingers feel really happy. You know, when you're like zooming and moving in and out. Faster. The zoom ring has been placed perfectly at the end of the lens. And by perfectly, I mean, it's flat out in the wrong place once again. 
at least in my opinion. There's a minimum focus distance of a half a meter at the wide end and one meter on the telephoto end. Five stops of image stabilization, weathered seal design, par focal support, which means focus is maintained as you zoom, and finally, a stupid dedicated info panel that probably adds extra cost to the lens that isn't needed. Because Steven, who actually uses that panel? Speaking of cost, this lens will set you back $2,600 and be available in February, which honestly isn't that bad when you compare it to the other manufacturers. Will you be picking one up? The second lens that Nikon officially announced is the 120-300 2.8 for the F mount. Basically, this is my wet dream lens of 20 years ago when I was shooting sports. In my pants. Nikon says, and I quote, it's ideal for sports, wildlife, and portrait photographers seeking a bright and fast telephoto lens that offers sharp image quality across a wide range of focal lengths. Thanks to its extensive 120 to 300 millimeter focal range, the Nikon 120 to 300 f2.8 provides users with a pro level single lens solution, replacing the need to carry multiple lenses. Right, so does it replace the need to carry a 105 1.4? No. 85 1.4? No. 70 to 200 2.8? Maybe on that one because it only really replaces the need to carry a 300 2.8. Any guesses as to how much this lens weighs? No. Only 3,250 grams, which is seven pounds, 2.7 ounces for any of you guys playing at home. Now, what I have to say is good luck hand holding this lens if you don't have arms like this. What's it cost? Hey, what? I'm still flexing, Steven. I'm not done flexing yet. Anyway, are, are you sitting down? Steven, sit down. No, Steven, you're gonna wanna sit for this one. $9,499.95. I bet it will go on sale and then Nikon will sell like 10 of them and then they'd put out a press release to tell you that the demand is so high that it's now back ordered. Now I get it, it's an F lens and not a Z lens as this will be baller on a D5 and D6, but what took them so long to make this lens in the first place? Well, I was thinking about it. Now, I will not be buying one of these, though on second thought, it would look really nice next to my Noctilux. Next up, continuing on with more Nikon news, Nikon didn't just release two new lenses, they also decided out of nowhere to replace the Nikon D750 with the Nikon D780, leaving me wondering, where's the 60 and 70? Are they okay? Did anyone notify the police? Was there even a search party? It's been over five and a half years since the Nikon D750 was released. At that time, that was what I considered to be the best all-around full-frame camera on the market, period. It says period, so I I read period, period. Damn it. Period, period. Anything you put on that prompter. I recommended this camera to so many people who were asking what should their first full frame DSLR be? Well, here we are in 2020 in a world where mirrorless is all the rage, but tons and tons of people still own and love and want more DSLRs. Introducing the Nikon D780, a 24.5 megapixel BSI full frame sensor with Xpeed 6 processor. Oh, doesn't that sound familiar, Steven? Yeah, yeah, it sounds very, very familiar. It has an ISO range of 100 to 51,200, capable of seven frames per second with the mirror and eight frames per second in live view or 12 frames per second with 12 bit RAW in live view. Two UHS-2 SD card slots, 51 point autofocus system with 15 being cross type and the addition of D5's autofocus algorithms. And when the mirror is flipped up out of the way, you will have 273 phase detect autofocusing points as this camera basically turns into a Nikon Z6, but without the all important electronic viewfinder. So to shoot it mirrorlessly, you're gonna have to rely on the LCD, thus making you look like an amateur as you prance around with the camera out in front of you, kind of like this guy. Looking at me. Continuing on with the specs, the flash has been removed, which will upset some people who like to just flash people in public. We're now up to 1 8,000th of a second, up from 1 4,000th of a second top shutter speed. The ISO button has now been moved to the top of the camera, and the vertical grip won't be existent for this camera, just like on the Z6. Now in terms of video features, they are the same as the Z6, with 4K at 30 frames per second with a full pixel readout, 10-bit N-Log out, focus peaking, and continuous video autofocus that doesn't suck in a Nikon DSLR. Some people might call this a space cowboy. Yeah. Some might call it a gangster of love. Some people call me Maurice. What? Yeah. 
Others may just call it a hybrid camera that goes both ways, kind of like Dan. Takes one to know one. It's a DSLR that wishes it was a mirrorless camera, but it will never be since it doesn't have an EVF or a Z mount. Now, I personally think this is going to be one of the best prosumer Nikon DSLR bodies ever made, but comes at a premium price of $2,300. That's anywhere between $450 and $600 more than a Z6, depending on if Nikon is running a sale at that time and including a free F to Z adapter. For me personally, the DSLR is dead, but I know for many, they want to stick it out. Keep going. Will you be contemplating the D780? I was thinking about it. Let me know down below. Speaking of cameras and lenses, I'm giving away your choice of a camera or lenses valued up to $3,499 in my super huge mega camera giveaway. Head on over to bit.ly slash megapro2020 to get entered for free right now. Now, if you purchase or have already purchased Fro Pack 1, 2, or the bundle, you will score extra bonus entries. Good luck. And finally, because this has been a super long photo news fix, Canon has unleashed the greatest sports DSLR camera in the history of sports cameras in the way of the 1DX Mark III. Now, we've known that this camera has been in development, but now it's officially official. This absolute brick shit house of a camera packs a 20.1 megapixel full frame sensor, but does not, I repeat, does not include IBIS as many websites were reporting. The prior 1DX Mark II boasted dual digit 6 plus processors, but the Mark III now includes just a single digit. X processor, not to be confused with the Roman numeral 10. So they want us to call it the X, and I'm definitely gonna give it to you because X gonna give it to you. X gonna give it to you. X gonna give it to you. What's X gonna do, Steven? Give it to you. Exactly. The X processor is said to be three times faster as well as help this camera go from an ISO of 100 to 102,400 natively with one stop better quality, most notably in the 6400 to 12,800 range. There's an all-new 191-point AF system with 155 of those points being cross-type, but still clumped securely in the middle of the frame, you know, because it's a DSLR. But check this out. It shoots at 16 freaking frames per second for up to 1,000 or more RAW plus JPEGs or HEEF files thanks to the dual CF Express cards. But wait, there's more. If you flip the mirror out of the way, this camera morphs into a 20 frames per second shooting camera with both an electronic and mechanical shutter, which utilizes dual pixel AF, which means it has eye detect as well as face detect and some sort of tracking that lets you select from 525 autofocus points. That matches the 20 frames per second of Sony's A92, except for the fact that you have to use an LCD screen in order to take photos opposed to an EVF, which means you're gonna look like this guy. No, he's right here. Now on to the video specs. The 1DX Mark III will do 10-bit 422 4K up to 60 frames per second and 5.5K 12-bit RAW saved internally to the CF Express cards, both in full frame. But Canon's gone ahead and limited 4K and 5.5K at 60 frames per second. It will not autofocus, but it will do AF in 4K in the crop mode. It does offer 1080, 120, but still without audio. Now there are a ton more specs and I did make an 18 minute long preview video that is linked below that you can watch after this photo news fix is over. The 1DX Mark III will be available in February for the low, low price of $6,500. Canon is super close, guys. The mirrorless features of this camera tell us exactly what we should expect when Canon decides to put out a pro mirrorless sports camera. Sony, you've been put on notice. The notice that in maybe two to three years, Canon may or may not be able to match your A9, which is already three years old. And there you have it. That's your super long photo news fix this time around. To check out the last photo news fix, go ahead and click right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that is where I'm gonna leave it. Jared, PolandFronosPhoto.com. See ya.